Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we're going to talk a little bit about crimping. Now I have already done a crimping video quite a while ago now and you can go and watch the original one here. But recently I did a video where I asked subscribers for what they wanted to see and one of the big asks was another crimping video, particularly talking about some of the smaller kind of crimps that you can do, the kind of tools that you need and also what you need to have in order to do crimping. Now I crimp an awful lot of connections here because crimping is a much better electrical and mechanical connection than soldering. And the reason for that is that because what solder actually does is flows along the conductor that we're about to put together. But what it also does is create a solid lump on the conductor itself and occasionally with vibration, changes in temperature, etc, etc, that solder joint can snap or crack or come off completely. So uh, the difference between that and a crimp is you're not stiffening the wire so that it is more resistant to those kind of failures. And you don't get things like a dry crimp like you get with dry soldering, so it's a much nicer way of doing it. So I originally trained as an electronics engineer, so I've been crimping for about 30 years. So I'm going to show you the way that I do it and the way that I like to do it. There are other ways around and there are other tools and other processes, but this is the one that I use that works for me, that gives me the best outcome for the way that I tend to use everything. So in this video, first of all, we're going to talk about the tools, what you need. I'll give you some tips and tricks about where to get all these pieces from. Then we'll spend a little bit of time and actually go through the process of how to do the crimping. The crimping process is the same whether we're talking about servo connectors, the kind of connectors that we're using all the time in the servo leads inside our models, right the way down to Pico blades or those kind of things if you're going to crimp those as well. However, you're going to need a slightly different tool. Personally, I would say that if you can't get the hang of crimping these larger kind of crimps here, these kind of servo style DuPont crimps, then I would never attempt one of these smaller ones. Uh, what I tend to do for where there's lots and lots of these little connections, because these DuPont style are really fiddly, is I keep hold of all the spare ends as I'm building stuff, or buy these ready made up ends from places like eBay, and that allows me to crimp the larger crimps onto the end of the wires here, these DuPont servo style, and then I can make the cables that I need doing it that way instead. And that can be an option for those of you that just can't get to hang of doing the really, really small crimps. So first of all, let's talk about the tools that you're going to need. Well, you're obviously going to need some crimpers, but we'll get onto those in a second, but you will need some wire strippers. These are very old school wire strippers, and the way they work is this screw Hopefully you can kind of see there we have a hole. Uh, this screw kind of adjusts the size of the hole. I really like this. This is what I was trained on and they're perfect. So what you do is you set the hole for the size of the conductor inside the wire. And then what I tend to do is just pop the wire through so I can just see it appearing. And then just pull and then we've stripped the end of the wire. Now I will probably take just a fraction more. There we go. Now I, I always twist the wires together just like that so that none of them go stray, but that's all you need. Just two, three millimeters ready to put into the crimp. If you haven't got these already, get yourself a set of these. So you're obviously going to need a crimp tool. Uh, we have two here that I use on a regular basis. These are my everyday crimping devices. The first one here is a regular everyday kind of crimp tool available from places like eBay. It's going to be perfect for the servo style of crimps. Uh, this one's built to do both the insulation and the conductor crimp at the same time, but I don't use it like that. I'll show you how we use this one in a second. And then the other crimp here is these things. These are these PA09 crimps. I hope the camera's going to pick that up. There we go. Uh, which are perfect for the really small things like the Pico blades and the one millimeter Molex connectors. Uh, they are a complete pain in the butt to crimp because they are so small, but you do need some very, very, very small teeth. Come on camera, catch up. There we go. So uh, if you don't want to spend 300 bucks on the proper tool, uh, this is probably going to get you close enough. It's still not perfect for those kind of things, but it will allow you to make those crimps off. 
You are going to need crimps, obviously. They come in lots and lots of packets. So the way that I tend to buy them, again, is from places like eBay. Uh, if you're looking for Pico blades or those kind of things, if you put the name of the crimp that you're looking for, followed by the word crimp, you'll usually find stuff tend to be shipped from our friends in China and uh, you need to make sure that you're giving yourself a good three or four weeks before you need them when you order them. So I always have a bag or two when I get down to the last kind of 20 I'll order some more or if you're going to order things like the servo style crimps which is the one we're going to do in a second then the best thing to do for that is search for servo crimp or DuPont crimp and you'll find them. In fact, if you search for DuPont crimp, you'll also find these kind of tools that are perfect for crimping them as well. Last thing you're going to need, of course, is patience and practice. This is like any other thing that you do in the hobby, any other skill, you are going to have to play with it. The first couple of dozen crimps that you do will not be perfect, but once you get the hang of how the tool works, how you've got to position everything, the kind of pressure that you need. Uh, when I was learning how to do all this stuff back in the day before these ratchet crimps, my uh, tutor used to talk about the engineer's grip, and that's because everything back in the day was manual. So you tend to find you will end up with grips of steel if you're doing this a lot. First of all, let me zoom in a little bit and show you how to make these crimps off. We'll do it with a larger crimp because Hopefully that will help you see what I'm actually doing. Uh, the crimp process is exactly the same if you're going to do it with a Pika blade or a one millimeter Molex connector, but you are gonna have to use this tool and use the smallest crimp size here to make that happen. So let me zoom in a bit and we'll have a go at crimping something. So here we are a little bit closer, so hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing, because the challenge with making a video like this is these parts are so unbelievably small, and if we think these little servo style connectors are small, then trying to actually film crimping Pico blades or any of those is nigh on impossible without special equipment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the way that you do it with these larger ones, and the process is exactly the same. So let me very quickly, before I actually show it on uh, here physically, let's jump onto a slide and I'll show you the process. Now the actual crimps themselves have two separate crimping parts. The first part is at the back of the crimp and that is designed to hold on to the insulation and provide a mechanical connection between the crimp and the actual wire itself. So if you took the wire, that is the part that's taking that strain and providing support relief for the actual main crimp itself. The middle part of the crimp is the part that actually grabs hold of the conductor itself. And we're not trying to completely crush the conductor out of all existence. We're just trying to put a nice firm pressure to bend those parts of the crimp around the conductor and get a nice solid connection. And the reason that I do it that way is that allows me to test that I've actually captured the conductor inside the crimp and I can mechanically give it that little tug just to make sure I've got it completely okay before I then go and crimp the back part of the crimp itself over the insulation. So to be in with the chance of having this crimp work I need to make sure that the amount of uh, stripped insulation on the wire is going to fill the part that's going to be crimped over the top. I always just roll the conductors together inside the wire if it's multi-stranded that way it increases the diameter slightly and it also makes sure that no stray wires are going to get outside the crimp if it's a really really thin wire that you're crimping I would crimp twice the distance and fold it back on itself because you want to fill the crimp with as much material as possible now the way I put the crimp into the tool itself this is one of the tools that's designed actually to crimp the insulation and the conductor at the same time. I don't like that, so the way that I use it is I put the crimp into the jaws. There we go. Let me bring it up to the camera so you can see that. So that the insulation crimp, the crimp at the back, is proud and butted up against the metal of the jaws and the actual crimp itself for the conductor is sat inside making sure that the connector isn't caught in any way then it's the case of slipping the wire into the connector push it all the way in make sure that the insulation is butted up against the tool and then crimping down using firm hand pressure and letting go pop the crimp out of the tool and then give it a little pull if it comes apart 
then you haven't actively crimped the conductor, it's not a good enough connection, and have another go. So now it looks like that, uh, and we need to crimp the insulation, so I would just push it together with my fingertips, pop it in the same part, actually it doesn't really matter, and then just gently, don't need to go mad for this bit, push it down, and there we have our crimp that's ready to pop into a connector. So if I just grab a servo connector from one of the bags, just show you how to pop it in. There we go, something like that. Then what we can do is push that new crimp home. And there we go, we have made the wire off. It's that easy. Now, let me just go through that again, go back to the slide, and let's just recap on what we did. So first of all, we strip the wire so it fills the entire crimp area. Again, if it's a very thin wire that you're using, then strip twice the length off that you're actually going to need, fold it back on itself. I would always twist the cores together, it makes the cores fractionally larger and also stops any stray wires escaping outside the crimp. Position the tool with the insulator crimp portion outside of the crimp tool itself and just crimp down on the middle part that's going to crimp onto the conductor and make sure that that's a really nice tight crimp and that you've got it. If you have and you're happy then pop it back into the tool and with a little bit of gentle pressure then you can crimp over the top of the insulator. Now if we go back to the desk it's exactly the same with the PA09 crimp tool. This has much, much, much finer teeth than the other one. And uh, this, again, it's about 30, 35 quid. So these aren't inexpensive, uh, which is why I'd recommend that if you only have a handful to do, I personally would look at buying these kind of ends off eBay or uh, and then actually crimping servo connectors to the other end like the one we've just done. But if you're going to be doing this a lot, this is probably the next best thing after the 300, 350 pound uh, specialized tool. Uh, do exactly the same thing, but this time use the very, very small connector as part of these crimps. I tend to put things like the Pico blades and the Molexes into the 1.0 part here. The teeth are super, super small. Uh, again, just make sure that you're not catching any of the actual conductor itself and you should be fine. So hopefully that helps those of you that are interested in getting into crimping and it answers some of the questions for those of you who were kind enough to get in touch and ask for the video. For me, I would say get yourself some cheap and cheerful crimps, have a go at crimping some wires, get used to it. If you can't get the hang of crimping with these, then you're never ever gonna be able to get the hang of crimping with these. But once you've had couple of dozen crimps and you've got the hang of it then you know what it starts to become very straightforward and a crimp is by far the best electrical connection on something like a radio controlled model. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.